Okay, so what I've done now is I've drawn up another simple circuit here for us to follow through. Remember before, we talked about Ohm's Law, I, V, and R. This is your divide, and this is your times. The other two power circuits are P equals I squared times R, P equals V squared times R, and P equals V times I. So this one here would be mostly for total power. All right. This one's for a parallel circuit. Remember how we talked about two resistors in parallel? And this one for a single one. So what I'm going to do in this one is show you, it might look like a big complicated circuit, but what we're going to do is just basically break this down to give you some type of um, routine on how to break it down. Um, okay. So first thing we always need to look for is resistance total. So what we would be doing is 1 over 60 plus 1 over 90. That gives us these two here. Plus the 120 plus the 1 over 90 plus the 1 over 60. Now remember on our calculator, if we have a look at this calculator here, we have a little uh, icon on here that we talked about last time called X1. Now X1, like I said in the last video, shows us to put it over the value to give us a common denominator. So by using this, we can work out the common denominator between these two resistors. So if we have a look over here, we've got 60 and 90. So we need to find the common value between that one and this one first, work them out, and then we add everything up to get our resistance total. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put 60, all right, and then do the X1. So I've got 1 over 60 now, plus 90. All right, push X1, push equals, push X1 again, and we get an answer of 36. So the first one's 36, now I'll do the second one, 90. All right, X1 plus 60, X1 equals, push the answer, equals, and we get 36. All right, same thing, still works out the same because they're both the same. All right, so we got that and 120 in the bottom line there. So 36, all right, plus 36, plus 120 equals 182. 92. One, 192. <laughs> okay, my daughter's videotaping at the moment, so she's helping me. All right, V over R is the next thing for the resistor, the current total. So we have 340 volts divided by the 192 ohms. What have we got? So 340 divided by 192 equals, we'll just bring that back to 177, 1.77 amps so now we've got the total right so some of the things they can ask you to find right in this will be for example they might want it should be too not dark enough they might ask you to find the current flowing through this resistor the voltage drop of this resistor and the power of this resistor so for me the three things i'm looking at here is Voltage I equals uh, V over R. So we've got voltage drop here. So we need to put a voltage drop into here. P equals, now remember how we said a parallel path. If we look here, P will be um, V squared over R. So we'll need to put voltage drop in there. And the actual voltage drop here will be I times R. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this down to do three voltage drops. A voltage drop here. A voltage drop here. I'm going to do the three voltage drops first. So, voltage drop one, voltage drop two, and voltage drop three. So, if we have a look at this, I times R, I times R, I times R. Notice I'm doing all of your formulas because this is stuff you've got to lay out, all right? Okay, so the first one is I times R. We've got 1.77 times 36. Why am I using 36 here? Because 36 is the current flowing through the one value here. But if I had to, if I look at it, it's a parallel path. I can't have the current flowing through the 60 
a nothing thing because current is flowing through both resistors comes back to one comes back and splits again so 36 will be here again so that'll be the value there then I've got 1.77 times 120 and 1.77 times 36 again so let's get our voltage drop for these three so 1.77 times 36 equals 63.7 then it'll be the same here and the next one we got is 1.77 times 120 equals 212.4. So now I've got the three voltage drops. What I'm going to do is now work on I equals I, or the voltage, the current through the 60 over here. So the current going through the 60 will be I equals V on R. So the voltage drop I'm going to use is 63 for the first resistor, first voltage drop. 63.7 volts divided by the resistor, which is 60. So I'm going to get something like one amp. So what I'm going to do here, we do 63.7 divided by 60. And we get a funny number, which I've got to come back to do. 1.06. I knew it roughly because that's going in there. It's going to go 1 point something. So 1 point something amps. Okay. So that is the answer for that one. Now, the second one we've already done because we did the voltage drop for the second one. That's done. Now we just got to find the power for the third. So power equals power for the 90. It's going to equal V squared over R. All right. We did that because we knew it was a parallel path. All right, we have the voltage drop, which is here. So 63.7 squared divided by the resistance, which is 90. And what do we got? So let's go to the calculator. 63.7 squared, all right, divided by 90. And what do we got? 45. 0.05 watts it's not current or voltage so this one here is what we get for the third one so there you go so just a step back from what we did what i did first i went and did all my voltage drop i did me sorry my resistance total did that first i got 192 found my current total which gave me 177 okay so step one step two then I did step three, found all the voltage drops, broke them down. Because when I worked and broke down the formulas, I needed the voltage drop for the current, I needed the voltage drop for the power, and I didn't need much anything, just basically worked out voltage drop. So, did that step three, step four, and then step five. If you break it all down into steps, you will find your way, you'll work your way through it, all right? And you need just to double check. Sometimes you need to do an extra step like this voltage drop here, because you need that value to work your way through the next one. All right, well, I'm going to do another one again after this. Just do a few different examples and show you how things differently work. Now you're still on one example and then saying that's it. I think if I do a four or five different examples, you'll start to get the idea of how things work. All right, thank you.